All right, so in this video, we're going to be, ta be talking about volume by cylindrical shells. Okay, so in the last couple videos, we've talked about finding the volume of a solid using disc method and washer method, and now we're going to be talking about our last method of the three, which is cylindrical shells. Okay, so first off, let's look at this problem here. Okay, so find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals 2x squared minus x cubed and y equals 0 about the, x the y axis. So basically we're taking this region right here and we're rotating it about the y-axis. All right, great. So we would need to use washer method here, right? But the problem here is that we have our top function here and our bottom function here, but they're the same exact function. So we run into a problem, right? We can't put in the, it doesn't really make sense of how to actually end up solving this, okay? So what we can do and make this a ton easier is use cylindrical shells. To help you understand what cylindrical shells are, first we're going to start off by just finding the volume of a cylinder, okay? So we're going to draw a cylinder. Alright, so here's our cylinder. Okay, we have a, this is actually a hollow cylinder. Okay, so we're finding the volume of this outer piece right here. We have two radii. We have our inner radii, right? The radi the, the radius from the uh, center, the, it's the distance from the center of the uh, cylinder to the, uh, so the shorter point here. And then we have from the center of the circle to the end of the cylinder. All right, now, how do we find the volume of this cylinder? All right, well, let's start off with the volume equation for a cylinder and that's pi r squared h. Okay, great. Now we need to do something similar to when we did washer method when we had to subtract two radii to find the actual, um, the, the volume of the outer piece here because remember the inner piece is hollow. So if we have to do that, we would get pi r2 squared h minus r1 squared h. Right? So we just had to separate those those radii, okay? Now, we can take that h out. All right, so I just took the h out there. We can also, now because we have, we can do difference two perfect squares to factor this, okay? So let's factor it. We have pi times r2 plus r1 times r2 minus r1 times h. Right? It may be a little bit difficult to see how I did difference of two perfect squares there. Um, and that might be, of course, uh, a concept that you learned a while ago, so it's a little hard to remember now. Uh, but And we also are working with variables, not um, a, a combination of variables and numbers. But hopefully you can see that we did difference two perfect squares there. All right. So we also can take out a Look, what we're going to do, we're going to take out a 2 from this R2 plus R1, and I'll tell you why we do that in a little bit, all right? But if we take out a 2 here, okay, then what we're going to get is 2 pi, all right? And we're going to get a R2 plus R1 over 2. And then, of course, we have our R2 minus R1 times height, okay? Great. So now we have at this volume equation what does this actually mean okay well let's let delta r okay we're going to set delta r equal to r2 minus r1 okay and we're going to draw a we're going to do a radius with um no subscript so we're just going to have an r here and that's going to be r2 plus r1 over 2. All right, and that's representing the average radius of a shell. Okay, and I'll write that down right here. So that's the average, that is the average radius of the shell. Okay, so now that we have those let statements in there, we can like make this look a little nicer, I guess. Uh, we end up with volume equal to two pi, and we have a, r2 plus r1 that's going to be r so 2 pi r and then we have r2 minus r1 that's delta r and we also have the h i'm gonna write the h before the delta r and you'll see why later 
Okay, so that is in a nutshell kind of what you're doing with cylindrical shells. Okay, that's for one shell. Okay, and what do I mean? What, what am I talking about here? Well, we like, like, you know, what's a shell? So what we're going to be doing with cylindrical shells is we're going to be dividing this curve into picture these as like like infinite decimally small um, distances like from from here to here all right that's infinitesimally small okay and you'll see why we're going to integrate here um, so that makes sense why it would be okay but just imagine so we have a a region like this all right let's talk about this region right here so picture that region rotated around the y-axis now what you're going to get is this basically picture that region as that piece right here and it's rotated around so now you have this little radius inside right this piece right here becomes r1 okay and r2 is the distance from the the y-axis to or, sorry the origin to the end point of that region okay so then you get r2 all right and you form your cylinder so now we have a bunch of volumes because we're still going to take more and more uh, little cross sections, I guess you could say. I mean, they're not really cross sections, but we're taking more and more sections of this curve and we're doing that same exact thing. So now we have a bunch of those volumes and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add them all up. And how are we gonna add all of them up? Well, we're going to integrate here, all right? So we're going to integrate this over the region. So integrate from from A to B, okay? And that is the volume of your entire solid, all right? So let's solve this problem using cylindrical shells. I'll tell you guys, I'll show you guys how this actually works. All right, so first I wanted to start off with our equation again. Notice that two pi r is the circumference, h is the height, and delta r is the thickness. So just if you want to remember this formula in an easy way it's circumference times height times thickness okay and you integrate it that's really it all right so let's start off here we have our volume all right our bounds are going to be zero to two all right and uh let's start off we have two pi times the radius what is the radius going to be well it's whatever the distance is from here to whatever point on the x-axis and that is of course always going to be x all right, and since our bounds are, they, they are in terms of x, right, they're, they're x points, all right, we're going to keep our radius as x. Um, our height, what is our height? Our height of these sections is going to be our function, right? That's going to be 2x squared minus x cubed, all right, and what's our thickness? Well, we're integrating with respect to x, so that just becomes dx. All right, that thickness is either going to be dy or dx, depending on what you're integrating with respect to. All right, so let's start off with our integral, okay? This is just calc one now. We have two pi, the integral from zero to two of, we distribute the x here, we get two x cubed minus x to the fourth dx. All right, and we can integrate that now. We get our volume is equal to two pi times, well, we can do our reverse power rule here. We're going to get x to the fourth over two minus x to the fifth over five. And we're gonna integrate, uh, we're gonna evaluate that from zero to two. All right, so we're going, the, the zero is just gonna kill everything in here. Um, so we can just plug in that two. We're gonna get volume is equal to two pi times, well, we have a two to the fourth over two. That's gonna be two, third, two to the third minus two to the fifth over five. Okay, and when I write that again, two pi times eight minus 32 over five. Um, some teachers actually, I mean, some professors, they, they might think that's okay, whatever. Um, I'm gonna simplify it a little further. I'm gonna take that over five out. To do that, I would have to multiply this eight by five. All right, that's just a little bit of algebra. Uh, we get two pi over five 
times 40 minus 32, and that equals uh, 16 pi over 5. All right, and that's basically it. That's all we have to do. Okay, so don't let if you, if some of that conceptual stuff kind of freaked you out a little bit, like it didn't make too much sense to you. Of course, you can always watch it again, you know, just to get a little better of an understanding. But really, all you need to know is this formula, and just have a kind of like, like a little bit of an understanding of, of what you're doing. Okay, to be to actually be able to solve these problems. So. One more thing I want to note here before we uh, end the video here. Our cross sections, okay, our, yeah, our, our cross sections are now parallel to our axis of rotation when dealing with cylindrical shells. But when we did washer method and disc method, okay, those cross sections were perpendicular. Okay, and I'm going to bring that up again when I do a little review video on all three methods, but you, you should at least know that you're going to be integrating with respect to different variables. Um, so you integrate with respect to X for this problem um, for cylindrical shells, but for disk and washer method, it would be with respect to Y. Okay, because you're, and then you would have your uh, right function here and your left function here um, and, and all that good stuff. So uh, that does it for this video. I'm going to be doing um, easy, medium, and hard uh, practice problems for this. So you're going to have tons of questions to, to look through. Um, and I'll see you guys then.